Hey everyone, welcome to M Squared. Today, we're talking about something everyone loves, taxes. That's right, the thing we all try to avoid but can't escape, like pineapple on pizza. But don't worry, we're not here to just complain. I've got some tips on how you can pay less tax in 2024. So grab a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's stick it to the tax man legally, of course. But first, disclaimer. This advice is based on what we know ahead of the labor government's first budget in October 2024. So if things change, well, blame them, not me. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. So why are you paying more tax? If you feel like you're being squeezed harder than a lemon at a summer barbecue, you're not wrong. Thanks to long frozen tax thresholds, more and more of us are getting bumped up into higher rate and additional rate tax bans. And with the current labor government acting like the sheriff of Nottingham, except they're targeting hardworking folks earning between 55,000 and 70,000 pounds instead of the rich, who have conveniently already left the UK, things aren't looking too rosy. Yes, even the 45% tax rate is now being applied to anyone earning above 125,000 and 145,000 pounds, thanks to a recent conservative brainwave. So, if you're wondering why your wallet's feeling light, it's not just inflation. But don't stress too much. There are ways to fight back, and no, they don't involve moving to Monaco. Let's go over some ways you can legally pay less tax. 1. Pump up your pension contributions. First up, let's talk pensions. If you're thinking that's future me's problem, I hear you. But listen up. Contributing more to your pension is like giving the tax man the cold shoulder. Why? Because your contributions get tax relief at your highest income tax rate. Not only will future you thank you, but your current tax bill will also get a lot lighter. It's a win-win. 2. Avoiding capital gains tax, CGT. Like a pro. Capital gains tax is the sneaky one. You sell an investment, make a profit, and boom, the taxman's at your door. And the government keeps shrinking the tax-free allowance. From 12,300 pounds in 2022 to 2023, down to a measly 3,000 pounds in 2024 to 2025, I mean, what's next? A zero pound allowance? But don't panic. Make sure you're using your full ISA allowance of 20,000 pounds each year. Any investments held in an ISA are completely free from CGT and dividend tax, no matter how big your gains grow. Want to stick it to the tax man even more? If your investments have taken a hit, you can use those losses to offset gains elsewhere. A silver lining, right? Pro tip, if your spouse is earning less, why not move some investments their way? That way, any returns exceeding the tax-free threshold will be taxed at a lower rate. Sharing is caring and tax saving. Saving on savings tax. Yes, there's a tax for that too. Here's a quick rundown on how to avoid paying tax on your savings, because apparently, saving for a rainy day also gets taxed. Higher interest rates are great, until they nudge you into paying tax on your savings. Thanks, economy. Here's how to dodge it. Know your personal savings allowance. Basic rate taxpayers get 1,000 pounds of interest tax-free, higher rate taxpayers get 500 pounds, and additional rate taxpayers. Well, you get nothing. Congrats. Max out your ISA cash and investment ISAs. Are your friend? Interest earned in them is tax-free. Consider a GISA for your kids. Because if the government's going to tax your savings, you may as well start a tax-free nest egg for your kids. Move savings to the lower paid spouse. If one of you earns less, shift those savings over. You'll thank yourselves later. How to stick it to inheritance tax. Ah, inheritance tax, the one that kicks you when you're already down. The government is raking in billions from this, and while the telegraph is shouting for its abolishment, I wouldn't hold your breath under labor. But there are still ways to reduce the bill. Here's how. The £3,000 annual gift allowance each year you can give away £3,000 without it affecting your estate. So go ahead, be generous. The seven-year rule, give away more. And if you survive seven years, it's tax-free. Think of it as a race against time, but with money. Residence nil rate band. If you're passing your home on to kids or grandkids, you get an extra 175,000 pounds tax-free. But don't try this with your nephews or nieces. This is strictly a descendants-only club. Real-world examples, tax savings in action. Now let's put all this theory into practice with some examples that'll make you feel like you've outsmarted the tax man. Example one, pension contributions. Meet Sarah, earning 52,000 pounds. By increasing her pension contributions by 10,000 pounds, she slashes her taxable income to 42,000 pounds. The result? Her tax bill drops by 2,344 pounds. 
That's enough to book a holiday to escape all this tax madness. Example two, ISA investments. Dave invests 10,000 pounds into an ISA. Five years later, it grows to 12,763 pounds. If he had invested this in a regular account, he'd be hit with CGT and dividend tax. But thanks to the ISA, his gains are tax-free. Boom, more money for him. Example three, inheritance tax. Imagine you've got a 1 million pound estate. By gifting 300,000 pounds and surviving seven years, you reduce your estate's tax liability from 270,000 pounds to 120,000 pounds, saving your heirs 150,000 pounds. That's one smart move. Final thoughts. The taxman may be relentless, but with a few savvy moves, you can keep more of your hard-earned cash where it belongs in your pocket. Remember to plan ahead, take full advantage of your allowances, and don't forget pensions and ISAs are your best friends in the battle against taxes. That's it for today's video. If you found this helpful, or at least mildly entertaining, hit that like button and subscribe for more tips to make the taxman cry. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.